Welcome to another Morales tutorial video. Supabase is the open source alternative for Firebase. It provides you a post with database authentication, instant APIs, edge functions, real-time subscriptions, and storage, just as the description says over here. On today's video, we are going to learn how to take a Supabase database and connect it with MetaMask using the Morales API. At the end, we are going to have a demo like this one. If we click on Authenticate via MetaMask, we have to select the account, and the user must sign a message over here. And once the user is signed, a new JSON web token is going to be created over here, which is going to be used to verify if the user exists or not. If the user does not exist, well, we are going to create a new user on the database. Otherwise, we are going to show the user's information. Also, we are going to set up the table policies in order for just the authenticated users to be able to get the information of all the users on the database. Otherwise, if an anonymous user wants to get that information, it's going to receive just an empty array over here. So if you want to learn how to connect Supabase with MetaMask using your API, keep watching because we are just getting started. What's up, YouTube? My name is Vasily, your Web3 instructor from Latin America, Ecuador. I've been building on the space since 2020 with cool crypto projects. In my free time, I really enjoy singing and playing the guitar. And if the time is good, I like to go out and take some meditations. But enough about me. Let's go back to the video and start building. Today's tutorial is based on our Supabase Node.js demo we have here on the Morales documentation. So don't forget to check out the video description because you're going to have a step-by-step -step process you can follow up. And also at the end, you're going to have a GitHub link on which you can find all the code we are going to use on this lesson. So let's get started. Here on my Supabase admin panel, let's create a new project. I'm going to call it Supabase demo. We have to provide a password. Be sure your password is strong enough. You can select the closest server for your country. Let's keep on East US for now. And we are using the free plan. So let's create a new project. And the first thing we have is all the project API keys. We are going to be using all of these ones. So don't close up this tab because we are going to use all of this at time. For now, let's go to the table editor and create new table. This table is going to be called users because that's what we want, authenticate our users with MetaMask on Supabase. We are going to keep these default parameters, the ID and the created byte parameter, and let's add two more columns. The first is going to be the Morales provider ID, which is going to be a bar chart, and let's also create a new one for the metadata, which is going to be, of course, a JSON. Let's save this, and once this is finished, we have to create some RLS policies. This policies is actually something you have on Postgres SQL to restrict or allow the access to the rows on a certain table. If you want to learn more about this RLS security, please check out the Supabase documentation. They have a really good explanatory video about that. For now, let's click here and create a new policy. Remember, we are doing this to be able to have as I showed you on the demo. Just the authenticated users will have access to read the information of the table. So we are going to name this policy enable select for authenticated users only. So we are going to name this policy enable select for authenticated users only. The parameter is going to be select. Of course, we want the role to be authenticated and the expression should be true. So let's go about here. Let's click on review. Your policy should look like this. You can double check it before we can continue. And let's click on save policy. Now we are ensuring just the authenticated users will be able to read from this table. And that's it for the database configuration. Regarding to the backend, the first thing we need to do is install the dependencies, including Morales, Supabase, and the JSON web token. So we can use a yarn add Morales at supabase slash supabase.js and the JSON web token. Let's click on enter. And of course, I already have the project set up. This is going to be really fast for me. Once you are done, we can start reviewing the project. So here on my project, I have a file called outservice.ts because we are using TypeScript. And of course, you should import the dependencies we just installed. Morales, the supabase client, and the JSON web token. 
the first thing we need here is to create a Supabase client, which is going to use the Supabase URL and the Supabase service key. In this case, we are going to store these keys on a .n file because remember, some of these keys are sensitive content and you shouldn't be sharing those to anyone. So if you haven't cloned the demo already, do it now because now we need for you to go to the don and file and start filling up the information over here. Also, if you close the tab with that keys, don't worry, you just can go to your project settings and here on API, you are going to have them all. The project URL is public. You can share it if you want it with everyone. So let's go back here and set up the Supabase URL. We have the unknown public key we have an anonymous public key. We can use this one if we have set up that RLS policy on which just the authenticated users can retrieve the information. So this unknown public key is also something you can share with anyone if you like. Let's paste it over here. And then we have the service role, which should remain secret. The reason is because with that key, you can bypass the security we just add to that table. So let's click on reveal. Remember, don't share it with anyone. Let's copy this, go back here, paste it over here. And finally, we have the JWT secret, which is for the JSON web token. Again, it's something you shouldn't be sharing with anyone because based on this token, we are going to verify and it's like a bridge will allow or deny your connection. So let's also paste it over here. And of course, as we are already here on the .m file, you can see here, we just have left the Morales API key. So if you don't have a Morales account yet, this is the part of the video for you to hit pause, go to morales.io, create your free account, and here on your admin panel on Web3 APIs, you are going to have your API key for Morales. I'm going to copy mine. And this is also something you shouldn't be sharing with anyone. Let's save this and that's it. Let's continue with the backend. Here on my index.ts, I'm just importing again Morales and starting it because in order for us to be able to use it, we have to start the Morales SDK. So you just have to type morales.start and provide your API key, which already lives on our config. And the config depends on that .m file. Now our next function is request message. Remember when we were signing in on the demo page, we have to sign over a message over here. So that's the message we are going to set up over here. This function takes as parameters the address, the chain, and the network time by the fabulous EBM. Here we make some configurations, such as the URL is going to be the Supabase project URL, the date is going to be now, and also we have an expiration date, which is going to be just the limit we are giving the users to sign that request. And here is the important part on which we use the Morales API. So we set Morales.out, we are using the authentication API to request the message and we are sending over those parameters we just talked about. So again, we are going to have a message like this on which we have the URL, here is the Supabase project URL, the version, the chain ID, the nonce, and more information over here. Of course, if we hit on cancel, we are going to have an error over here. Let's continue. And as we are sending a request message for the user to sign it, we have to verify it as well. So we have another function over here called verify message, which is going to take the network type, the signature. The signature is the one got from Metamask at the time the user clicks on sign and also the message. Again, we use the Morales authentication API, which the function verify with these parameters, and we are going to have a result we are going to transform on JSON. So if the user actually exists, we are going to get from the table users, we are going to select all of them, and we are going to provide the Morales provider ID, and of course, we just want to have the user with that unique ID. If the user is unexistent, we are going to create a new one. Again, we are going to insert on the table users, the Morales provider ID and the metadata. 
And finally, remember I said that we should generate a JSON web token each time we do this. So we create a new token with jwt.sign. This sign function requires a payload, a secret or private key, and some options. Here we send the payload with some information. The secret key comes from the configuration. Remember the one we just set up on our .m file, and we don't have more options. So at the end, we are going to return the user and the token we just generated. With all of this, we have all we need to create new users and authenticate them using MetaMask and Morales API. So now let's give a look to the client side, which actually implements this authentication process. On our index.html, we need some CDN. First, we need Axios to make HTTP requests. Ethers.js in order to be able to connect with MetaMask and the Supabase package. Here I have a file called scripts.js on which we have to provide the Supabase URL and the Supabase public and on key. So let's get them from the project settings. Let's copy this one, paste it over here and let's copy the another one and paste it over here. With this information, we can create a Supabase non client so supabase.createClient, we use the supabase URL and the supabase public anon key. And you might be wondering why we create two different clients. Because remember, on this one, we are using our supabase secret key. And on this one, we are using the public anon key. And remember, just a moment before, we created that policy for just the authenticated users to be able to retrieve the information. We are not going to be able to retrieve the information using this Supabase public anon key, but still is a good way to test out those policies. So first of all, we have a, here a function called connect to MetaMask, which is using a standard ether providers to connect with MetaMask with a standard petition, which is going to return the signer, the chain and the account, just basic ethers.js stuff. And with this, we have all we need to authenticate our users. So the basic workflow is going to be that once we click on this authenticate by MetaMask, we are going to retrieve information from this user wallet, ask them to sign this message. Once the user sign, we are going to send a message to the backend and in return, we are going to get a JWT token. With this token, we can initialize the Supabase SDK and start making petitions to the database. If the user is on the authenticated list, well, the user will be able to retrieve all the information of the users of that table. And if we are using an anonymous policy, we are not going to be able to retrieve the information. Just don't forget that over here, we have the function, which is an example of how we can go through that authentication flow I just mentioned. So at the end, in order to get the users of that database, we can use a function called getUser, which is going to verify if it's authenticated or not, which is going to verify if the user have authenticated using MetaMask or not. And if that's true, well, we are going to have the response I already showed you over here with the information of the users of that database. And also, if you go back to your Supabase, you are going to see a new user has been created using that wallet. And that was it for today's tutorial. Don't forget all the code for this lesson is on the Git code repo. So check out the link on the description. And as you are already here, click over here to subscribe to Morales channel, turn on the notifications and also check out more videos. Thanks for watching till the end and see you on the next occasion.